Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Tri-County Customs. I'm your host again, David. We have a 2016 Hyundai Elantra that we're getting ready to put another remote starter in. Just doing quick visual checks. You can see there is a check engine light on, airbag light. It's always nice to know that before we start. That way, once we get going, we don't have to question, was it like that before? So I'm going to play with this GoPro. See if I can't find a decent spot, kind of like that. So you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Alrighty. Take a fuse panel cover off. Get myself organized a little bit. You got a Phillips head screw here in the bottom right hand corner. Then you have another one at the bottom of the steering column. And then put the key in because you got a couple of Phillips head screws behind the steering wheel. Now, we do have to take this side panel off. I personally like to use a pick tool. And a plastic panel popper. That way, you can use a pick tool to get a little bit of space. And then you just put the plastic panel tool in there and work your way around. And that way you're not sitting there digging and gouging at the one at the plastic. Because that opens up two screws on the side. Again, they're Phillips head. And that same pick tool also works great for popping out your OBD plug. And then when you go to release this entire bottom piece, there's a couple little latches on the side that hold it in place. You pop them out. Finish popping out the OBD plug. Couple little twist turns, and there we go. That is off. So now we need a 10 millimeter. Take that metal knee bolster out.
and just like that. And now we can take this steering wheel cover off. And there we go. Access to all the wiring we're going to need for this remote starter. I did already run the antenna wire. Just because I'm it's what I'm used to doing right off the bat while I'm doing quick a quick visual check of the dash and stuff. And I like to put the remote starter right up here next to the, the fuse box. I find that this iDaddle start module fits in there really nice. Doesn't take up any extra space, easily accessible after it's done. <clears throat> All right. I think I just made a mistake with my recording here. I'm still getting used to this GoPro. Uh, as you can see, there's been quite a change of things here. We have the main power harness wired up, along with the park light wires. <clears throat> and now we're working on the CAN bus 2 system and the ground wire. These are going through the OBD plug here. Our CAN bus wires are the white and yellow. In pins 6 and 14. Which would be these two right here. They're always twisted together. With the white one being the CAN high. Which is also the blue red. Now this wiring code is only for the the iData Link iData Start Mod HC series. I'm not sure if it matches up with any others. It just this is the brand that I use. So always consult your instructions to make sure you get the right wires. And if you have any doubts, double check, take your meter out, which if I didn't mess up on the, the recording, you probably would have seen me do that for the park light wire.
and then because one of these was on pin number six which is our white wire for the for the can high I know that if I go two more over this black wire in pin number four will be our ground wire And with that, it takes care of the complete power system. Ground, 12 volt, starter, accessory, ignition. We have our park lights hooked up. And we have our can high, or can two system. This car has two can bus systems in it. or at least two, two points we've got to access. Put a little Tessa tape on here because it kind of blends in with the rest of the, the factory wiring. We try and do our best to make it look as close to the factory wiring as possible. I've heard too many dealerships say that they're not going to warranty something because of the way the install is. And then you go look at it and you can't see anything. You don't know what's what. So by keeping it nice, neat, factory looking, it makes their life easier when they have to diagnose problems and helps out you on the other end as well. got to get down to the immobilizer. I'm going to take the hood latch off. It's going to be a little hard to see. But I like to take a little panel popper and either a pick tool or a small flathead screwdriver. And as you're prying out on the hood release, you push in on the tabs there that spread out to lock it in place. I'm not sure what's living back there, but it's not there anymore. We're just going to vacuum that out of there.
You just never know what you're going to find behind some of these via some of these panels. So now for the immobilizer, we have our white black wire with blue dots. That's the connector side. Going to a gray red wire, which I have right here as well. So we're going to Tap them two together and then run it down to the immobilizer wire. Now again, as I said, these are for this vehicle with this remote starter. This one here, you do have to cut the immobilizer in half and you splice into it that way. So make sure you double check that wire. If it doesn't look right, go double check. You might say it's only a Hyundai, not that high tech of a car, but if you cut the wrong wire and splice into the wrong wire, make a, make a good day go bad in a hurry. Then we have our white red with blue dots going to our green red wire. Now we're going to do the exact same thing. Tap one into the other, and that way we've only got the one wire to connect up at the, at the splice point. These are going to go this way. They're going to tuck up and in back and go about there. So we don't need that much extra. So make them shorter. Put a zip tie in there to hold that in place.
crap. I'm gonna block the view here, but I'm gonna try and show you where it is as soon as I get this. Go. Okay. Bring you over this way and see what I can show you. There's the white connector. You can see that where I have the wire cut it is pin number 12, and it's that blue wire tucked way in there. Not all vehicles are going to be exactly like that. They could be in different spots. So just double check, make sure if you're not sure. And once you are, then you're clear to hook up some wires. making sure that you know which side of the wires you're connecting. The white black says connector side. The white red is vehicle side. So the white red wire goes on the wire that's not connected to the connector. And then the other white black wire, that one goes to the connector side. Get those soldered together really really wouldn't be good if those two wires ever came apart while the vehicle was being used there we go
screw them tucked in there. There, and that leaves us with just our two can wires left. Which is per normal with all with what seems like all Hyundai's. They love to put that wire, the can can one wires on the back side of the fuse box, which is a pain to get to in comparison to being on the front. We're going to run them around like that, and then they're going to get tucked in up behind and then we'll give this a test see if it programs and then put everything back together Back side of the fuse box, you will see the small connector, which is just underneath a larger one. It's on the lower right hand side if you're looking at it from here. So it'd be pretty much right behind where that little label is. And it's the orange green wire are the two we're looking at which would be pin 1 and pin 13 we're going to do the orange first because that's a can low which is our brown and yellow wire There's the orange, the can low, the green, which is our can high. Which is our brown and red wire. And if we've done it right, that should be the last wire we have to connect. Which it is. That's why it's good to have a, have a plan of how you're going to install it. That way you know you're going from one to another to another. And when you're done and you get to that last spot, you know you shouldn't have any wires left over. And if you do, then you've obviously missed something.
like that back in. All righty. Let's see here. We gotta get our unit down. It was only ever up there temporary. Just to hold it so I could run the wires. Wait for that light to go solid green. It does say this step could take up to a minute. There we go. Now we turn the car off. Start it and let it run for a couple seconds. Press hold the brake, program button, release the brake. And wait for that light to flash. Just like that. That was a tack being programmed as well. So, let's see. Door locks work. Truck release works. And all mighty question, it even remote starts. Heater system works. Brake works to shut it down. So I'm not going to bore you with uh, me zip tying and putting some more tape on there. I'll just bring you back, show you the final results. And there you have it. All back together. Nice and neat. Everything still works. Now I put the rest of the plastics together and let the customer take it. Till next time. Stay warm.